My dad came into my life when I was five years old. And from that point on, everything was perfect. Mother, father, nice house, cars, money, trips. The world was ours. My father was the greatest man in the world. He showed me what a man should do for a woman. January 13th, 1999, I wake up to about 20 police officers, guns drawn, pointed at my father. He is underneath the mattress, a lot of chaos going on, my mother screaming and hollering. I was told my father died because the police shot him. A few months later, I found out my father shot himself. It wasn't until after my father died, I found out the truth. The police came knocking on my door to let me know that my father might have been involved in the crime from 20 years prior. I offered my DNA sample, and that is how the truth was revealed. My father was living a double life, and none of us knew it. I found out my father was responsible for a horrific murder in South Carolina, a rape in Tennessee, a rape and murder of a daughter and mother in Missouri, and then came home to us like nothing ever happened. The last face that the victim saw was him. I can't fathom the pain and the hurt. I lived with a serial killer and rapist and didn't even know it. I have to battle separating the amazing man he was to me versus the real man he was to everyone else. I wake up every day thinking, how do I love a serial killer? Well, Deborah, I I'm glad to meet you. It's I nice to meet you. Thank I you. I'm sorry what you're having to wrestle with in, in your own mind, and I, I hope that we're going to wrap that up for you today because this is hard for you to understand that I'm in I, I love someone who is a serial killer and it's my father and it's half of my DNA and I, I don't understand it it leaves me with so many questions that I'll never get answers to and let's talk about both sides of him let's talk about the good side of him he was the greatest man that anyone would ever want to Treated be around. Treated you like a little princess. Yes, I was a princess. My mother was a queen. My sister was a princess. Gave us anything and everything we wanted. He was the all-American father that you would want and anyone, any daughter would ever want. You said there was a day in your classroom where he knocked on the door and had he you knocked, roses. Yes. He knocked on the door, door and br the front office let him, because they knew my father very well, the front office let him bring roses to myself and my sister in class. I thought we were rich. We had a bag phone. Yeah. So I thought, you know, we had a lot of money. That's what I thought. Yeah. And Little did I know that's not what it was. And you've never seen any other man besides him more involved with their family, more giving, more engaged. Right, until I met my husband, of course. Yeah, right. That's who, I, I held my father on a pedestal. Like, yeah. no one could ever be as great as him. And so now that you know what you know, you're asking yourself, how, how, how could I miss this? And, and you still have fond memories of him. Yes. And so you're saying, how can I have these fond memories of somebody like this? How can you love and hate someone at the same time? Yeah. that's also your father. Okay, because we know that while that was going on, there were other things going on. Yes. And we don't know that we know the whole picture yet, but what we do know is that while you were being treated like a princess, he would go off and the, the police said that your dad was one of... 50 people they thought to be involved in a crime. I knew better than that. Because of the area they lived in where murders happened. Yes, I, I knew I, I knew better than that part right there. Yeah. Um, after they handed me the card, after they yeah. told me what they were there for, and I got on the internet and looked up everything, I knew who my father was within 24 hours. I told the police, I know this is my father. Even though I was from the age of five to seven, thinking about everything, I knew my father was the man they were looking for.